Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, we're in the middle of a sermon series, and, and uh, hopefully the, the notes are passed around by everybody who wants them passed them. Uh, last week, our focus was on abiding in Christ. And we read from John chapter 15, verse 5. We read, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And we read that as we gather for worship, we encounter God and His love, and we encounter all the gifts that He gives us. And so that, that first word there is encounter, and I, I put that on there today. That when we encounter God in worship, we are connected to Jesus. We are connected to His love, and we may abide in bear good fruit. And so today we talk about bearing good fruit, what that means, and that as we gather in the love of God, as we gather in His midst as a body of believers, we express our joy with one another, which is the second word, express. We get to express our love and joy and worship with one another. And there are a couple notes on that. And I think uh, uh, the first one here is just uh, from our hymn today. It really just jumped out at me. Love divine, all loves excel. Joy of heaven to earth come down. Love divine, all loves excelling, joy from of heaven to earth come down. That love is Jesus. Jesus, come down from heaven to be our joy, the joy in our midst. That we can share that joy with others. So as, as the hymn goes on, we talk about what it means uh, to set our hearts at liberty, to be the end of our faith, to to be our joy in our midst. So that's, that's an important promise for us today. An important promise as we gather and worship. The other two aspects of worship that uh, are noted there, the two other needs would be, we'll talk about next week, how worship educates us, how it informs us how to live in, in, God's, uh, in God's kingdom. And then the fourth one there, is how in worship we're always being evangelized and being led also in evangelism. Well, today is about joy. Joy in the love of God. And for me, there is nothing greater uh, that expresses joy and symbolizes joy than the joy of a child. The joy of children, is, especially as they play together, but also a joy of a child who's proud to uh, belong to his parents or her parents. Proud to, to show them what they're capable of. Proud to show them how they grow. We have all these children at preschool who just gather around their students every day that come in here for chapel and you ask them questions about Jesus and the hands just shoot up, just like Brett says right now, he has something to say. But uh, they shoot up because they want to tell you, they want to get the right answer and when they get it right and you encourage them on their level, and you engage them on their level, they are filled with so much joy that they get to share with, with what you've taught them, and it's awesome. Uh, so I read the other day, uh, we were doing homework, he said I could share this story, so we were doing homework the other night, he didn't want to at first, uh, you know, what he's doing is he doing some kindergarten, so he's working on his sight words, learning his sight words, he's working on handwriting, those are his two, uh, lowest points in school. So we've been doing those worksheets at home. And we're, we're doing that worksheet with him. And I noticed that as he, as he finally started doing it and taking his time with it and really focusing on what he was doing, that his handwriting looked really good. And I praised him for it. I said, look how beautiful that is. It's amazing how, how great your handwriting is. And, and he had the biggest smile of joy on his face. He just lit up and he was so excited that I would share my love and joy with him. And, and, and it, it was a complete turn in the way that things were going. Before that, we were fighting over whether or not he even wanted to do a work. You know, just like I was at his age, he wanted to watch TV, play with his toys, have a snack, do anything but homework. But as soon as we, I shared my joy in what he was doing, he was ready to do more of it. He was ready to complete the entire page just by himself so that he could show me his work and be proud of it. And we shared that joy with one another. He went with fighting for me to, 
to love you with me. You see, we all live in that same love of Jesus. As he has invited us through our baptisms, where he claims us as his own, in the waters of baptism, to be his children. To share in his love, to live in his love, so that we can express joy with one another in that love. He has invited us to be his children. And when we have been baptized into Christ, we are baptized into his great act of love that he has done for us. His death on the cross and his resurrection from the tomb. For he has won for us our forgiveness apart from anything that we can do. Apart from our own works, there is nothing we can do to receive God's love. That's part of uh, our catechism teaching down in the third article. I, by my own reason or strength, cannot believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to Him. But it is by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Gospel, that we are brought. Brought to Christ and brought to faith and brought to His love. It is what God does in our lives that through baptism that we receive His love and He gives it to us freely. And this love, this gift, is the source of our joy. Much like a child sitting there at a table working with his parent on a work <coughs> is embraced in the joy of that parent when the parent says, you did a great job. Now it's not anything that child did really, because that parent loved that child before, before that child even sat down. I love Red even before he sat down to do the worship. I love Red even before he went to school. And I loved him, and that's why I sat down to do it. It's not because of the love that I'm, or not because of his work that I'm proud of, but it's because of my love that I'm proud of him. And that's the way that God is with us. That love is the source of our joy, God's great act of love, giving us our salvation through baptism, taking us up into his arms like his dear children. That's what makes our joy complete. And it is that love and affection from God that motivates us to share that love with others. Just like, you know, the kids are talking about their sports events, right? They win the game, they get to participate in the game, and they're just so excited to have played, and they go and they shake hands with everyone. There's Nash was saying, they high five the parents, thanking the parents, thank you for letting me play the game. That's what it is for us. We get to say thank you to God, thank you to others as we share God's love. Just thanking Him for bringing us and making us a part of His family. So in our text today, it starts out with these words, The Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love, abide in my love. See, Jesus invites us to abide in His love, to live in, with, and under His love, to remain steadfast in His love, to be surrounded by His love so that nothing else in this world, good or bad, can take us away from that love, but to remain steadfast in it. He invites us to live in His presence where we come and encounter Him in worship. To live in His presence where we have been baptized into His name. Where we get to share His love with others. And this is how we express His love. We express His love by sharing it and by keeping His commandments. As He goes on in the text today, He says, remain in my love. Just as I have kept my, com my Father's commands, keep my commands. And what that means for us is that means that we are to abide in Jesus. We abide in Jesus by loving God with our whole hearts and by loving our neighbors as ourselves, as Jesus has summed up the commandments for us. So in other words, we keep God's commandments by simply loving one another. I know I've said that before. As we encounter God in worship and abide in God's love, it is with great joy that we get to express in our lives that we get to share God's love with others, with our friends, with our families, with the people on our baseball and soccer teams, with the people sitting next to you in your pews, the people in the sanctuary, with all. Because it is in that moment that our joy through Jesus is made complete. 
as he says in our text today. Well, Jesus goes on to say this. He says, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down their lives for their friends. And then Jesus calls us his friends. He says, you are my friends. You are my friends. I've made you my friends, he says in baptism. I've made you my friends when I've called you by name, and you are mine. I made you my friends when I laid down my life for you. And it's through that moment that Jesus gave up his life on the cross. It is in that moment when he died for our sins to forgive us from, from all of our sins, to share his love with us as an expression of his joy. It's in that moment that he rose from the dead, giving us the promise of new and eternal life. And as Jesus will come again to judge the world and raise us all from the dead. It is through his crucifixion that he has made us a part of the vine. And a part of his resurrection that he has made us children. And he has made us friends. Now I referenced this in the first service. I don't really remember exactly what I said, but I know I did. And I love this uh, banner. Uh, it's beautiful. I love all the banners that are, are here. They're just wonderful. But this one... Uh, jumps out to me in particular, and uh, as I was talking with the ladies about putting it up, you know, it really didn't matter what side of the church they went on. Uh, but what I liked about hanging this one on this side is that we have the eternal flame over here and the baptismal font over here. And the eternal flame is the reminder that God is always present in our lives. And here on this banner, you have Jesus, and he's either ascending into heaven, uh, right after his resurrection, or he's descending for the final judgment. But either way, as you look at it, in either perspective, you see Christ, who has won the victory with the promise to always be there for us, to reign on his throne in heaven as he ascends into heaven, to reign on his throne as our Savior, to lead us in love and in joy and service. Or you see him on that final day, coming down to bring us into that new life, into God's everlasting kingdom as His children in that final day and final uh, salvation of joy. And so I just kind of feel like this is uh, God's wall of presence. You have His uh, ascending into heaven to reign on the throne. You have His descending, uh, His, his uh, final coming. You have the eternal joy that you have uh, God always present in our lives through baptism. It's kind of a, an amazing uh, amazing wall over there. Just as a reflection on what God has done for us. You know, through Jesus' death, His resurrection, through His ascension into heaven and His return for that final judgment, He is giving us a lot of joy. A lot of joy. And it's not our own doing that Jesus does this, for He says we did not choose Him. He says we did not come to Him, but no, He has chosen us. He has claimed us as his children, and that's the other baptism. But baptized into Christ, I have called you by name, you are mine. Amen. Not that we've recalled, that we called ourselves to God, that he called us. And that is our love, and that is our joy. And so it is in the light of all of this love that we are called to love others, to lay down our lives for them, to give freely as Jesus gives freely to us. To share as Jesus shares in the love, in his love we abide in him. So as we express our joy in the love of Jesus, we continue to abide in him. We continue to come and worship him so that we can bear good fruit, to encounter him in his presence. <coughs> and as we bear good fruit, we express our joy by continuing, by continuing to encounter and continuing to worship and serve. And you can do that in a few ways. I listened to them last week, so if you have that, that note from last week, you got it there. Otherwise, uh, uh, you know, just Bible study. If you're not in a Bible study, take a step up and join them. If you don't do daily devotions, take a step up and start somewhere. Even just a five-minute reading of Scripture. And like I said last week, don't just read Scripture and check it off the list, but read it and it on it. Pray over it. What does this tell me about God? What does this tell me about my life as a Christian? Fellowship with other believers. That's another great place to be. Just in the presence of Christians. Celebrating a birthday party. Celebrating here at church. New members. Celebrating with Christians. 
The other way that we express our joy and love is, Jesus says it this way, I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. So we express our joy by going out and bear very good fruit, by abiding in Jesus and then loving our neighbors with that love. We continue to worship, but then we put our faith into action. And that action then continues out to the week and expresses itself as joy. Joy that God is always encountering us as we walk, uh, as He walks by our side. So we express that joy as we share God's love with others. As we fellowship with friends. As we tell neighbors and strangers about God's love. And how His love is greater than any other love that we know. All of my elders are good at this. I said that at the first service too. All of my elders are really good at uh, sharing God's love with others. Uh, many of them, I think all of them visit people regularly in the nursing homes, in the hospitals, in their own home. Uh, those who are sick and can't make it, they visit with them to share God's love with them. Uh, I know that they all pray over this church and the mission regularly. But one of my elders uh, just recently shared a story that he shares all the time, a neighbor that he's been working with. So at all my meet, all meetings that I attend, uh, every, anywhere I give a report, I ask this of the group. I ask them to share their ministry wins with me. And what that means is I want to know what God is doing in their lives. And, and it, a ministry win can be anything. It could be God has blessed me with a new job. God has blessed me with a new grandchild. God has has blessed me this way. But a ministry, we can also be what God is doing through you. So uh, if you talk, had a faith conversation with someone uh, at, uh, at an event or something like that, you had a faith conversation with a neighbor, um, and you're telling them about Jesus, that's a ministry for you. So this elder, he shared with us uh, at, our, at our meeting how God is at work in his life. He is a neighbor who's very sick. This neighbor's been in the hospital for months. I've never met this neighbor, but I know that we pray for him regularly because our elders told us to. He's been on our list. He's been on the church list. He's been on my personal list. And we just pray for him all the time. But because he's in the hospital, this elder gets to go over to that neighbor's house regularly and have conversations with the family about what Jesus is doing still in their lives. That Jesus hasn't given up on this family even though he's sick. And that, that Jesus has won salvation for them. And he has forgiven them. And that he is... His love still abides with them. And he, is, he shares with them the promise of not only Jesus' death, but also his resurrection. That one day Jesus will return to bring us all into his heavenly kingdom. To raise us from the dead so that we can live forever with him. You see, what, what that elder is doing is he is sharing our Christian joy with others. Our joy that Christ is risen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, uh, John Mock on our way home, uh, he was the one that was awake to, to get us going the first time. So, <laughs> a little slow, but that's okay. Christ has given us one great commandment, and that commandment is to love. That's what he says here in our text. He says, my command is that you love one another, that you love God with your whole heart. The best way that we can do that is to abide in God and to bring others to abide in God as well. Jesus has died for us. And in that great act of salvation, His joy has been made complete. And we have been filled with joy. So in worship, we get to express that joy. And we did that today uh, in morning prayer. And uh, it's one of the reasons why I like this service. Uh, hey, turn to page 235. That's where we open today in worship. Give you a minute to sign. This is the interactive part of my sign. <laughs> so it, it opens with the slide as uh, as Rick sang for us. Oh Lord, open my lips, and you respond. <laughs> So he 
here in worship, we express our joy by inviting Jesus to be among us, to open up our lips, so that we, our mouths, will declare His praise. And then that's what we do. We give glory to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Worship is an expression of that joy as we encounter God in His love. And so as we move out from worship, we go out into the world, we get to share God's love with others. As we continue, continue to express that love and joy for Jesus, God's love is sacrifice. He gave us His one and only Son. He gave up His holy beloved Son so that we could wholly love Him. So I encourage you today to express your love for God by living out your vocations. And your first vocation in life is a baptized child of God. He has called you by name. You are His. That is your first vocation in life. So your first vocation is to come and abide in the love of God. Encounter Jesus every Sunday. Encounter Him every day in the Word. That is your first vocation. Your second vocations in life, third, fourth, fifth, sixth vocations in life, you're either a, maybe you're a mother or a father, a grandfather, grand, a grandmother. You're a sister or a brother. You're a son or a daughter. You're a friend. You're a neighbor. You're an employee. You're a student. You're a volunteer. Maybe a pet owner. All the way down the list. There are so many things that you do in your life. God has given you vocation. And the vocation is where you can express His love by joyfully living out that vocation as a child of God. Loving others whom God has placed in your life to serve. So take the next step. Ask yourself how you can better love others in your life. If you are a, a parent, how can you better love your children with the full love of God? If you're a volunteer, how can you better love those whom you serve with the full love of God? If you're a student, how can you better love your teachers and your educators with the full love of God? Love them with all the love of Jesus. For God has loved you. He gave up His one and only Son for you, that through Him He makes you His own, and He calls you His friend. So go in that love and joyfully serve the Lord. Amen.